Hey, I'm M. Jacobson. I'm a deacon of Church of Sweden and I'm gender fluid and pansexual. I met up with M, who is a deacon in the Church of Sweden. But don't worry if you don't know what a deacon is. M will describe that soon. But let's start with listening to how M identifies. If we start from the beginning, I always fell in love with a person and not a uh, sex. And that was never a big deal for me. Still, there was nothing I was open with because that was how it was then and might still be. But for me personally, I wasn't ashamed or anything. I was, it was just me. When it comes to gender identity and gender expression, the realization came a bit later in life for M. Uh, let's see, maybe five years ago, I was fed up with uh, the male role that I had been living in, so to speak, how I was raised and all that. I'm also an artist and the visual expressions always been very important to me and very interesting. Then I started to wear more yeah, female-oriented clothes, I would say. And it just felt, wow, this is me. So in that sense, I would say I'm a gender fluid because it's more about the expression than, than that I actually feel today I'm a woman or tomorrow I'm a, I'm a man or anything. I'm M. Labels aren't so important for M. The labels, I understand them. They are important. They mean a lot to many people. However, for me personally, I am a, I'm a human being, first and foremost, God's creation, and uh, that's good for me. And also, I uh, changed my name, also around there, from something to M, which I'm very, very pleased with, because it's gender neutral, and it's short, and it's beautiful. So that's how M identifies, or doesn't identify. So now, what is Deacon? Deacon here could mean a lot to uh, different things. Here in the Nordic tradition, it is the church manifestation of caring of, of uh, the creation and people. It used to be and almost is today as well, only women. Nurses, it started. You had to be a nurse and then you uh, became a, a deacon. In, in Church of Sweden, that's sort of uh, it's the background to care for people and, and uh, also God's creation. We don't have that many liturgical duties uh, during Mass. We are present at Mass, but here it's the priest's room. The priest is responsible for, for the Mass and things like that. We give vows just as the priest does. We are ordained and uh, in theory and church law, we are all equal, the bishop, the priest and the deacon. But our vows are different than the priests. We have two in common and two are different. And generally we are more that we should go out and seek those in bodily and soul harm or things and always stand on the oppressed people's side. And in that there's also a political dimension. We call it prophetic diakoni, but you could call it political diakoni. We are obliged to seek injustice and, and if we see that we, we should do something about it. That's something that differs from the priest. And M became a deacon pretty recently. I don't have a church background. <laughs> I've done many things in my life and um, <laughs> I just love life in that sense that if someone would have told me, you know, I don't know, five, six, seven years ago that you're going to be a deacon and sit here. <laughs> Oh, that's just the best thing. But my story is not so different from a lot of other people's stories. I was sort of around my 40s and uh, a lot of things happened, but a, a general sense of, is this it? Is, is it there going to be more? A lot of things coincided and I just had to stop and uh, it all broke down, basically. In that, I had to look myself in the mirror and really ask myself, what do you want to do with your life? I have had my faith since I was a kid, as long as I can remember, which is unlogical. I don't come from that background and, and religious home in that sense, but it's always been there. I looked in the mirror and uh, prayed, and the answer came quite swiftly, I would say. M realized that M wanted to serve others, 
and that it was possible to do that as a deacon in the Church of Sweden. I just went to the diocese the, where the bishop sits and all that and in comes this uh, thin, really not so well looking guy like, yeah, my name is M and I, I wonder how you become a deacon. And I have to say, and I, you know, I, I criticize church a lot and you should do that, but I'm also immensely proud of church. I was received with respect from the beginning. I don't think there would be so many other organizations, companies, corporations, you name it, that would have embraced someone I was probably too old, too uh, sick, too weird, too whatever. And that is something I will never forget. That is the essence of my church. You should be able to just walk in here and um, it's not that easy for everyone, I know. But you know, everyone is welcome in my church here. That's just how it is. And I was shown that as well. M started the long process towards becoming a deacon, having to first study a three-year-long university program and then another year with Church of Sweden. And then M was finally ready to start working as a deacon. I was ordained last year here in the Dome of Gothenburg. I will probably think and reflect on that day for the rest of my life. It was a very beautiful and emotional uh, moment, the whole thing. And I was home. And now, M works in the mysterious place that is the church. Time ain't linear here. A week in church, it's a, it's a cycle. Someone is born, someone dies. And everything that happens in between those things happens here. That could be hard, painful. The worst of the worst you can think can happen and we are sometimes a part of that. And the best things in life and everything in between. So in a sense you, you relive one life every week in a sense. And Em loves to work as a deacon. From that moment when I decided you know what I want to do and the purpose, this is big words, but I understood the purpose of my life is to serve and create create and serve. That's the only thing I do these days. From that point in, in time, every morning when I wake up, I have that feeling that I, I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. I never had that before in my whole life. I'm exactly where I should be. There has been times where M has thought that maybe M shouldn't dress the way M do or express in a way that makes M feel comfortable while at work. When I started working in church, I thought about that a lot. Because on one side, it's not about me as a person. But on the other hand, I am and you are, we are the ones we are, you know. We should not feel any, you know, need to uh, excuse ourselves, to apologize or anything. So that was... Uh, a balance and when I came in, in and started working in church I was very I think I was uh, very sensitive you know someone offended or uh, things like that I meet so many different people in different circumstances and I never heard a bad word more curiosity or wow is someone like you in church that's cool, you know, I think that's cool. So, and that is the important, I'm, I'm here for the people of the congregation, the parish, but basically every person. Then of course, sometimes it has maybe not been that all the time, but maybe it's more internal church in some occasions. But as a whole, it's just a positive experience. And I don't think about that today. But then again, I, I'm not naive either because it leads to a lot of uh, new meetings in that sense. People want to talk to you or uh, just say something and it's generally very nice things. And that leads to, you know, that presence that we sit down and talk or laugh or whatever. And that, then it's good. Church in Sweden might seem very liberal. Same-sex couples can get married and there are many, many queer ministers, pastors, deacons, bishops and other church representatives that are members of the queer community. But M thinks that the church isn't as progressive as it might seem. Church of Sweden as a whole, people think it is rather liberal. Maybe they've seen the pride uh, marches, they 
live uh, Södermalm in Stockholm or Majerna in, in Gothenburg. And that is one part of the Swedish church for sure. That is not representative of the church as a whole. It's more conservative in that way. And that is something I don't forget either because there are a lot of things to do. Sometimes you hear about all these people, so-called Christians. They are the free churches and all this, but this is also in Church of Sweden. We should not run away from our responsibility and, and, and uh, be an inclusive church for everyone. So uh, in, in a sense, I think uh, it, the church here is sort of mo a bit more conservative than, than people think it is. And this is what drives M. I hate when you discriminate people, when you, you, you make difference between people. That's what drives me. But that could be someone uh, living uh, paperless on the streets here, or someone poor, or someone fat, or someone with uh, you know, disabilities. And, mo and everybody just wants to be who we are, right? And I still don't understand why is that so hard to just let people be who they want to be. And uh, as long as that exists, you know, bigotry and uh, discrimination, I have to fight that. I've swore to fight that. And I see many LGBT people that are discriminated, that are not treated right, that are treated horribly, and by church, all churches, other religions as well, and that is not acceptable. I have a lot of things to do as a deacon if I'm going to uphold my wows and all that because this is everywhere. M has spent some time reflecting on the power of the church and the power you're given by being ordained by the church and wearing its uniform. And, and uniform is power and you need to reflect that as well, especially as a deacon when you meet people in crisis and, and really bad situations. Maybe a uniform isn't the best way to, you know, connect. And it opens doors as well. It's basically about power. We always need to reflect a lot about power. Listen to some final words to sum up the video from M. So all this comes down to, I think, you know, if we're talking about LGTB rights and people or people that don't have food and are hungry, it's about the human being itself uh, and tr to protect her dignity and rights in that sense. If you enjoyed watching that video, please like, comment, subscribe and share the video. I really appreciate you showing your love in that way. If you also want to support the channel financially, that's possible via Patreon, but really no pressure. See you next time.